India is talking about women's safety because of two major events last month. In Kolkata, a female doctor was raped and murdered in a hospital. In Kerala, a judicial probe exposed extortion in the film industry. This triggered anger and protest, so political leaders wanted to be seen as doing something. In West Bengal, they're pushing a new bill, the Aparajita Bill. It was passed by the State Assembly today. Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee called it historic. She even demanded the resignation of Prime Minister Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah, saying they had failed to protect women. That is why they must resign. So the politics is heating up. But let's take a look at the bill first. It's called an anti-rape bill that gives the death penalty for rape, with two exceptions, two conditions rather. If the assault results in the victim's death, or if it leaves her in a vegetative state, then the death penalty applies. That is the first and the most important provision of this bill. Number two, the limit for investigations. Probes into rape cases must be concluded in 21 days. The current limit is two months. Extensions may be allowed, but only under senior supervision. Provision number three, fast track courts. The law calls for the establishment of special courts for speedier justice. Number four, penalties for delaying justice. And this is for everyone, from police officers to health workers, to anyone who fails to act promptly, they will all be penalized. But the bill is not without its problems. It restricts publication of court proceedings in such cases. You need permission of it to report on the court proceedings. And if it is published without authorization, you can be penalized. Now the state says this is to protect the dignity of the victim. But what it also does is prevent the media from holding the government accountable. Now the Bengal Assembly has passed the bill. It will head to the governor and then the president. And if the president gives her assent, it will become the law. But will the law change anything? We ask because India already has anti-rape laws. They've existed for years. Rape is a non-bailable offense in the country. The punishment ranges anywhere between 10 years to life imprisonment, in some cases even the death penalty. So do we really need another law? The state says we do. They want to plug loopholes in existing laws. They want to enforce stricter punishment. But this approach may not help. It hasn't helped. And I'm not the one saying this. The Indian Supreme Court is. Harsher anti-rape laws alone do not deter crimes against women. I'll give you an example. In 2012, there were 2,44,000 cases of crime against women. These were the reported cases, 2,44,000, 2012. That's the year the Nirbhaya rape rocked the nation. So in 2013, India's anti-rape law was amended. It became stricter. But crimes against women only went up. In 2023, the number of recorded cases was 4,45,000. That's around 51 FIRs every hour. So India did introduce stricter laws, but that has not brought the crime rate down. Because this is a systemic problem. Laws alone cannot fix it. Take, take the, state for Kerala, the state of Kerala, for example. A Me Too movement is rocking their film industry. A new judicial report highlights abuse and exploitation. It implicates top actors, filmmakers have been charged, politicians have been named, more than two dozen cases have been filed. The state of Maharashtra, which is home to Bollywood, has now taken note. Apparently, they want a similar investigation into Bollywood. I'm sure it will expose more dirt. And such investigations must be conducted. But they must be seen to their logical conclusion as well. And I'm afraid that does not happen. We have a recent example in the Me Too movement, the one that started in 2018 in Bollywood with Tanushri Datta. She accused actor Nana Patekar of touching her inappropriately. Two other people corroborated her version and that opened the floodgates. There were accusations in every industry, Bollywood, government, even the media, practically everywhere. Hundreds of people were accused. Top figures were implicated. Many lost their jobs. Yet six years later, little has changed. Look at Tanushri Datta's case. The police took her complaint, but one year later they closed the case, citing insufficient evidence. That's what happened in most of the cases, in fact. As for the men, after lying low for a few months, they got back their jobs. They were reinstated. And they're back to doing what they did. No repercussions, no judgment. Because public memory is short-lived. Once it's out of the news cycles, no one cares. When Me Too hit the headlines, there was a push for change. But when it got to boring legislation, the public focus shifted. And the accused made a comeback. Most of them charted a redemption arc for themselves. And who ended up paying the price? The women. 
We are a society that forgives and forgets easily, so change will take a lot more than stricter laws. Yes, we need deterrence, but we also need more accountability. We need more empathy with the survivors to amplify their voices, to hold the men accountable and not rest until justice is served or else all this outrage will remain a mere footnote in this story. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 Network initiative.